Welcome to Asian Noob everyone, and let's take a look at the new unique building for the Hindustanis called the Caravanserai. For those of you who don't know, the Hindustanis will replace the current Indians in the game and they will receive a few tweaks. One of them is the aforementioned new unique building in the Imperial Age, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Alright, let's start with the stats. The Caravanserai can only be built in the Imperial Age and takes 60 seconds to construct with one villager. It is also quite beefy at 2700 HP and is actually relatively cheap at 175 wood and 50 stone. The Caravan Sarai's purpose is to both heal and speed up the trade carts that are around it. Based on the tooltip, the healing and speed bonus effect is active around a 10 tile radius of the building, but it's counting that from the base of the building. Hence, in practice, you'll need to count 8 tiles from the edge of the building instead, as moving the trade cart 9 tiles away stops the healing and speed boost. In case you're wondering, the Caravan Sarai heals the trade carts at 1 HP per second. This means that one pass through would heal roughly 16 HP without the Caravan upgrade from the market and roughly 11 HP with it. Hence, in theory, a trade cart with 1 HP would be healed up back to full in roughly 7 pass throughs or a single pass through by 7 Caravan Sarais. This healing effect is no doubt amazing in games where a few Hussars or a few other pesky enemy units wiggle their way into your trade route and slowly chip away at your trade cards. Obviously, the Caravan Sarais won't be able to protect your trade cards from a ball of archers one-shotting your trade units, but in long games with constant raiding, they will definitely come in handy. What makes the Caravan Sarais more interesting is the additional speed bonus though. Although it doesn't specify in the tooltip, my testing has concluded that they get roughly 30% speed boost within the influence of a Caravan Sarai. Of course, this begs the question of how much of an impact would they have on the overall gold generation, so let's find out. Alright, now that we know about the fundamentals of the Caravan Sarais, let's explore on whether or not they're worth it to boost your gold income from trade, and if so, what the payback times look like. Here are the conditions in which I set up all the tests. I generated a large 8 player map on Oasis and set up the markets on each end. I also kept all the random stuff on the trade route such as random trees, deer, gold, stone and so on to simulate the usual bumping and inefficiency in your typical game. I'll also assume that the player has picked up both the caravan as well as the Grand Trunk Road upgrades. Each ship provided a healthy 134 gold in my scenario. That said, the calculated numbers you will see are still going to be slightly higher than typical given that the other players will also likely trade and crowd the trade route. For our testing purposes though, this is good enough, as we're interested in the effects of the caravans arise and their impact as opposed to the raw numbers. The first set of tests I've conducted were aimed toward answering the first question. Do caravan Sarais perform marginally better with each added one or do they scale linearly? To answer this question, I set up the aforementioned test with 20 trade cards and allowed them to trade for an entire hour. Without any caravans arise, 20 trade cards were able to generate 32,399 gold, so that will be our baseline. When I added one caravan sarai to the trade route, the same 20 carts were able to generate 32,699 gold. That's a measly 270 extra gold after an entire freaking hour, which translates to roughly an additional 5 gold per minute. Now, if the caravan sarai scale linearly, I should get a roughly 25 gold per minute improvement with the addition of 5 caravan sarais to the trade route, so let's see if that's the case. After doing the same test with 5 caravan sarais, we were able to generate 34,423 gold, which, after calculations, translate to 34 gold per minute in total, and roughly 7 gold per minute per caravan sarai. When I cover the entire trade route with caravan sarais, which adds up to 11 of them, and run the same test again, the gold per minute improves to roughly 7 gold per minute per caravan sarai. In other words, no, they don't scale linearly, and the more you cover your trade route with caravan sarais, the better they collectively perform. I'm not entirely sure why this is the case to be honest, but my best guess would be that the improved speed allows the carts to untangle quicker and spend less time bumping into each other to path better. Okay, now that we've confirmed how caravan sarais perform on the field, let's talk about payback. 175 wood in the Imperial Age with a trade already set up isn't worth a whole lot, so I'm going to assume that 175 wood is worth 30 gold instead. With the added stone cost, and for simplicity's sake, let's assume that we need to recoup 80 gold per caravan sarai to say that they've repaid their cost. I'll also ignore the one villager building time opportunity cost as well, since you should be at peak economic efficiency with your villagers already by that point in the game, and one villager pulled away won't mean much. That said, I will include the one minute construction time into the payback times. When we look at the summarized numbers for 20 trade cards, we can easily see that the only acceptable payback is to cover your entire trade route with caravan sarais at roughly 10 minutes. However, games that last this long on large maps tend to allow players to usually reach 30, 40 or even 50 trade cards sometimes, so let's test for those as well. At 30 trade cards, we get a very healthy 155 extra gold per minute from our trade route, which translates to roughly 14 gold per minute per caravan sarai. 
This means that they would pay back their cost in roughly 7 minutes, which is amazing. Once the 7 minutes have passed, you'll enjoy a solid 20% improvement in your gold generation. One other way to look at this is that in this scenario, your caravan sarais are equivalent to 5 relics worth of trickle gold. It only gets better from here. At 40 trade cards, we get 232 more gold per minute, which is roughly 21 gold per minute per caravan sarai. An absolutely amazing 5 minute payback time comes alongside a 23% improvement to your gold income. And yes, that's more than 7 relics worth of extra gold generation. If you're lucky enough to get to 50 traders, the numbers get ridiculous. Almost 300 extra gold per minute, which is roughly 27 gold per minute per caravan sarai. After 4 short minutes, you'll enjoy a 24% improvement in your gold generation or a ridiculous 10 relics worth of extra gold generation. So yes, at 50 traders, every caravan sarai you built in this scenario to cover your route is almost equivalent to having a monastery with a relic inside. Well, here's the thing folks, the numbers for the caravan sarai look amazing at higher trade card numbers, but all of what I've covered so far is for one player only. You'll be playing with allies who will presumably also trade, and yes, ally trade cards also receive the bonus from the caravan sarais as well. Hence, let's assume that you're playing a 4v4 game. Let's say your pocket players were able to train 30 trade cards and your flank players 20. That's 100 trade cards that you will be buffing. Even when I factor in diminishing returns due to the increase in efficiency, we get some stupid numbers like a 2 minute payback time and roughly 47% increased gold generation for the team. If you have even more trade cards, the number look even better. In other words, you get the point. The late game potential for caravan sarais on large team games is insane. And finally, remember that covering your entire trade route with caravan sarais means that no melee unit can ever catch up to your trade cards, as they will be faster than the paladins, camels, and even hussars. Even if the trade cards get hit once or twice by chance, they will always be under the healing effect, making it impossible for your enemies to raid your trade cards with melee units. They will definitely need a ball of powerful ranged units that could one-shot a trade card per volley. Alright, to wrap up, let's summarize our findings and surface a few rules of thumb. Number 1. If you have a safe trade route, then building one or two caravan sarais doesn't make sense. Caravan sarais in low numbers do not have a meaningful impact to your gold income, and since your trade route is safe, you won't make use of its healing effects. Number 2. Use your game sense to gauge the quality of your trade route and the investment for your caravan sarais. If the map is large, your trade is safe, and you're in a position to invest earlier in your trade, then you can be as aggressive as 20 trade cards. I.e., once your team collectively reaches 20 trade cards, you can begin covering your entire trade route with Caravan Sarais. If the map is small, say a 2v2, or you're dealing with high pressure as a flank player for your team, then delay your investment of covering your trade route with Caravan Sarais to around 40 trade cards or so. Increasing your gold generation is not worth losing the game. If it's a 3v3 and it's a relatively balanced game, aim for around 30 trade cards. Remember that Caravan Sarais could be even easier to justify if the map has an abundance of stone, or your teammates can sling their stone to you if they won't be able to utilize it effectively. Number 3. Building a caravan sarai or two in hotspots where your trade route is exposed should usually be worth it if you just cannot cover your entire trade route for some reason. Two caravan sarais are only 100 stone, so you can just buy that from the market if you have to to protect the longevity of whatever trade you have going on. Remember, contrary to the scenario in the first rule of thumb, we assume here that your trade isn't too safe and you're not in a position to invest caravan sarais to cover the entire trade route. All in all, the Caravan Sarai is a great addition to the game in my opinion, and is an easy recommendation for most team games that play through mid to late Imperial Age. Honestly, it might be even slightly OP in 4v4s, especially in maps like Black Forest or Oasis where setting up the trade is much easier, but we'll have to wait and see how they play out. For now, its building cost is low enough to recommend it in most scenarios. Well, that's all you need to know about the Caravan Sarai in the upcoming Dynasties of India DLC for Age of Empires 2. I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't another super niche building such as the Fateria and should see a lot of playtime in most team games. And if you've enjoyed this type of analytical content, be sure to like and subscribe to not miss out. Finally, thanks to all of you who are continuing to support me on Patreon. As always, thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to take full advantage of the Caravan Sarai's and to see you all in the next one.